Our unforgettable tour of the Holy Land began after arriving in Tel Aviv, where we stayed at our hotel overlooking the beautiful coast of the Mediterranean Sea. As the sun set and with jet lag setting in, we all tried to get a restful sleep. The next day, our first official day of the tour, we drove to Jaffa, where we learned from Brother Don Perry about the events that took place in this historic city. We learned of the story of Jonah attempting to flee from the Lord. We also learned of when Peter saw in vision a sheet filled with all manner of unclean animals and was then commanded to eat of them, a message teaching him that the gospel could now be preached to all the world. From Jaffa, we traveled up the coast to Caesarea, the Roman capital of Palestine during the New Testament. While visiting the ancient amphitheater and Hippodrome, we read of Paul boldly testifying before King Agrippa while he was imprisoned here. Nearby, we visited the incredible aqueduct that brought water to the city of Caesarea. Next, we traveled to Mount Carmel, where Elijah called down fire from heaven in his contest against the priests of Baal. To conclude our day, we stayed in the ancient Roman city of Tiberias, overlooking the Sea of Galilee. The next day, Friday, we drove up the winding road up to Mount Tabor, the traditional site of where Moses and Elijah appeared to the Savior, Peter, James, and John. The site is marked today by a beautiful church with three inner chapels built for the Savior, Moses, and Elijah. While sitting on this sacred mount, we heard several powerful testimonies from a bishop and a stake president on priesthood authority. Next, we came to Megiddo, where we learned of the great battle which will take place here in the valley just prior to the second coming of the Savior. We also toured the ancient city of Megiddo, passing the huge city gates built by Solomon and hiking through the ruins of the city. Here we saw several examples of ancient stone mangers, similar to what the Savior was laid in at his birth. We also saw an ancient grain silo and walked through the city water system, which was designed to bring spring waters from outside the fortified walls to the inner protection of the city. After lunch, we arrived in Nazareth, the city where Jesus lived most of his life, and visited the Basilica of the Annunciation, the traditional site where Mary was told by the angel Gabriel that she would be the mother of the Savior. We also visited an old synagogue church and read the famous words that Jesus read while at his synagogue here in Nazareth, which began his ministry. As we walked through Nazareth, it was interesting to note how the streets were empty and bare because most of the residents, being Muslim, closed their shops to worship on this, their holy day of Friday. On Saturday, we had the unique experience of celebrating the Sabbath on Saturday, as the Savior would have done during his mortal life. The LDS Church, out of respect for the local customs of the Jews, honors the Sabbath on Saturday instead of on Sunday. At the hotel, several of us took the opportunity to ride the Shabbat elevator, which stops at every floor, so as to allow observant Jews not to have to work on the Sabbath by having to push the elevator button. To start off our day on Saturday, we took a boat ride on the breathtaking Sea of Galilee, where we read of the stories of the calling of the apostle fishermen the calming of the sea, and Jesus walking on the water. We then cleared the seats and took to the dance floor of the boat, dancing the Hava Nagila. We next had the incredible experience of attending sacrament meeting with the Galilee branch. It is difficult to describe the spirit that many of us felt as we heard the sacrament prayers in Hebrew while overlooking the Sea of Galilee. A member of the branch presidency remarked that had this branch been around 2,000 years ago, this would be the branch the Savior would have attended. After church, we all enjoyed a Peter's fish lunch with the head, tail, and all. This is said to be the type of fish that Peter caught that carried a coin in its mouth. 
After lunch, we visited the stunning park of Tel Dan with its blue water, lush greenery, and beautiful flowers. Here, we also hiked through the ancient city gates of Dan, dating to the time of Solomon and the Israelite pagan temple established here by the early northern tribes as they attempted to compete with the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. The footprint of the altar, marked by a metal pole structure, was huge in size, again with the purpose of competing in grandeur to the Jerusalem altar. Only a short distance from Dan is Caesarea Philippi, the location where Peter professed the famous words, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. On Sunday morning, as the sun was rising, a few of the tour group took the chance to swim where Jesus walked. Or in other words, we swam in the Sea of Galilee. Nice. The tour day began at Mount Beatitudes, the traditional site of the giving of the Sermon on the Mount. The hill overlooks the Sea of Galilee and is beautifully landscaped and marked with an eight-sided church, representing the eight Beatitudes given by the Savior. We next came to the remains of the fishing village of Capernaum, where Jesus likely lived during much of his mortal ministry. Here he performed numerous healings, called several of the apostles to come follow him, and taught the Bread of Life sermon. The synagogue where Jesus taught the Bread of Life sermon is found under the current remains of a later 4th century synagogue. The earlier synagogue was built from the local black basalt rock, and because the building did not perfectly face Jerusalem, the later white stone structure was shifted slightly to be more accurate. A very likely site for Peter's home is marked by a floating-like church, which is placed over a first-century home underneath. The church floor is made of glass so as to create a view of the likely ancient home of the chief apostle. Upon leaving Capernaum, we drove down towards Jerusalem along the banks of the Jordan River. On the way, we stopped at the stunning Roman city of Beth Shean, where we climbed the ancient tell and admired the beautiful mosaic floors, bathhouses, and column-lined streets. We also took the chance to experience an ancient public latrine. Needless to say, we were all grateful not to have to actually use it. Towards the southern end of the Jordan River, near the Dead Sea, we stopped at Bethabara, the traditional site of the baptism of Jesus Christ by John the Baptist. Several pilgrims, dressed in all white, came to these sacred waters to commit to God to follow Him. Though different from our own baptisms, the devotion and longing to follow the Savior could be seen and felt. Our last stop for the day was to take a short hike through the Judean desert. Here, Christ fasted for 40 days before beginning his ministry, and here was the setting for the story of the parable of the Good Samaritan. As we left the dry and barren desert, we drove into the beautiful city of Jerusalem. The excitement could be felt as the Dome of the Rock came into view, and as we looked from our hotel balconies over this, the most important city in the world. Our Galilee journey had ended, but our trip was far from over.